Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. I have the Glendronach 10, not the Portwood, the 10, the Forgiel, Forg, um, Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, non-chilled filtered, natural colored, 43%, uh, one liter bottle, which is very, very interesting, so it probably was made or designed for the travel retail. And it's 52 euros 90 cents over here, about $60, which is a fairly good price here. Whiskey base number 116862. Now, there's one little thing here. The word, the word fork is actually the hamlet in Aber, Aberdeenshire, where the distillery is actually located. That's why it has that name there. So we also have um, the eight-year-old with the... Um, Helen, so for Highland, it's a little bit of the Gaelic um, translation here. And um, there's one tiny little word here on there that some people have actually picked up on, for example, malt reviews, and it's at the very bottom here. It says, to encapsulate the heritage and terroir of Forg. Um, terroir. Long before Blackwater, Blackwater, Waterford, Waterford actually had here the word terroir, and Glendronach put it up in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare as usual. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that no one else has done an English video about this. Even the guy up in Sweden actually did a video about the Portwood that he got in um, Los Angeles. Uh, no, Las Vegas. He brought it back with him. And so this is a rare and exotic whiskey. It's all over Europe. Um, but not actually here um, very often, at least in the English-speaking countries for some reason. Hmm. So I pulled out the 12-year-old. I can buy the 12-year-old for €32.90, which is a fabulous, fabulous price, to be very, very honest. So if you calculate that up to the one, one liter um, price, you get 47. So it's 47 euros for a liter of this. It's 53 for a liter of this. So this is five euros more expensive, and it's ten, two years younger. So is it the same spirit? Well, basically, yes, but yet still no. So if we take a look at the the color here, um, the 12 year old is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more of a brown hue than the 10 year old. Now, if we take a look at the nose that it says here, it says here the nice, sweet, creamy vanilla with hints of ginger and autumn fruit. That's the official nosing notes here from Glendronach. Over here, we have a dance of Seville blood orange and cherry with ripe barley, roast chestnuts, and winter spiced cacao, or cocoa. Now, um, <laughs> some marketing expert actually decided to have a dance. Uh, I hate it when my tasting notes dance, but that's just me. All right, very good. Let's see what I get. Is there a difference? Is there a big difference? I always get a, a little tiny bit of a um, strawberry. Oh, darker, deeper. Not more complex, just darker. As if they put some European oak in there. It's oakier. This is um, fruitier. Then more vanilla. I definitely get a strawberry, uh, like a strawberry pie with some whipped cream on top of it. And here, I get currants. Red currant jam. With not enough sugar in it. <laughs> Interesting. These are very, very different products. I would not have guessed at the beginning. Now, um, one of my questions I had um, was why would anyone buy a more expensive younger product? Well, if you take a look at, um, what was it here? Lagavulin, I think it was, with the 8-year-old or the 12-year-old compared to the 16-year-old. The 16-year-old is very cheap, and the 8 or the 12, whichever one you want to pick, was so much more expensive, and for some people a little bit better as well. Um, I do know there's an ABV um, difference there, and here it's exactly the same. Um, 43%, both of these are non-chilled filtered. Both of these, no color added. So um, this is... Um, a bottling that I actually, let's see here, let's see if I can see the date on here. There should be a code, there it is, it should be here. And this was 20, 2016. 
an old bottle. So this was actually still Billy Walker. And if I can take a look at this one, this is 2018. And I'm not sure if um, Brown Foreman actually had already taken over or not. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do the 10 and then go to the 12. I can't say heat, but this definitely has more alcohol roughness, um, a little bit more of a spike in there. And definitely we have more of a European type of oaky moment, more of a darker cho chocolate. This is more of a, 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 a milk chocolate. Mm. That's actually very good. Um, as I mentioned, we have uh, more of a current. Here I have more of a strawberry. Let's read the official notes. Sweet Valencia orange and Morello cherries with rolling waves, rolling waves of ripped, ripe barley, rip, uh, barley, uh, ripped barley, ripe barley as the flavor deepens, savor dark currants, praline toffee, and earthy brambles. The words they're using are not wrong. The way they describe things, absolutely not my cup of tea. Come on, guys. Um, here we actually... Oh, look, we have Rachel here. I'm sorry. I should have looked immediately. All right. So we have Rachel, the master blender, and here we have Billy Walker still. So that was actually good that I looked. Good, good. Over here, let's just cleanse the palette. So I'm just looking over in the back. We have here the word 1826 again. Um, which we don't have on the back of that, only on the front. So they put it on the front and the back to show tradition, to show, show heritage, to actually show the terroir. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 The Glendronach 12 was one of these epiphany whiskeys for me. I remember having this. I remember having the Balvini 12 double wood and just sitting there going, wow, that's how whiskey can really taste. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was so good. Um, mm, I like this a little bit better, to be honest. No wonder. Um, they're both a mixture of Pedro Jimenez and Oroloso. Now, they didn't say what proportions they were in, but they are. Um, I have the feeling that here we have older casks involved, 12 versus 10 years old. And here I have the feeling that we have a little bit more of a European oak, a little bit of a touch, a little bit of a, of a little bit of an accent here. Good, good, good. So um, my recommendation is, hey, um, both of these are not going to break the bank. Um, this at 32 euros for the 0 0.7, this at 52 euros for the one point um, for the one liter bottle. So this is 52 euros per liter. This is then 47 euros per liter. If you can find this anywhere, apparently it's not easily accessible um, in English-speaking countries. It wasn't in the UK on my on my list, nor was it in um, America or Australia. It was only in the continental European countries. Yay, thank you very much. Um, this is actually something very, very nice. I'm going to give it a solid C+. Plus. Um Maybe even a little bit more, C++, maybe B minus minus, depends on my day, um, which makes this much better, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to do a 12-year-old cherry cast shootout. So, um, but what I'm going to do is I have 18 different 12-year-old cherry casks, um, single malt scotch whiskeys, and we're going to divide them up into three categories of six each, and we're going to test them blind. What I do is once a month, I'm going to actually send out 22 of these sets of um, three centiliters each of those six whiskeys to my super fans that they pay 25 euros, they get a set, and they can actually um, inter interact with me during a live stream in German. And then during the um, October, November, December, we're going to have one, um, the first and second place, which will advance to the finals. And then in January of 2021, I have plans up until 2021 in January for whiskey already. Um, then we'll have the finals. 
and there I'm expecting even more people, maybe 45 people to actually have those sets and taste with me and judge with me, all blind. So no marketing, no nothing involved with that. Um, the cheapest is, I think, Glenn Dronach, 12-year-old. The most expensive is um, the Macallan 12 um, Sherry Oak for 80-some euros, and everything else is usually around the 40-some point. And oh, by the way, um, this is 32 euros. Everything else is basically 40 euros. So what is Brown Foreman going to do? They're going to raise the price. So don't um, be surprised if this goes up. Um, if you're in the States, it's already gone up because of tariffs. But if you're in um, a continental, continental or even um, the UK, don't be surprised if the price actually goes up um, another 10, if not even 20% in the next year or two. Because they, everyone else is already at the 40 euro a mark, and this will actually... Um, close that gap, I'm sure. It's a whiskey worth its money. I definitely must admit that. Here, value for money is a solid C. Um, buy it if you want. I can recommend it. All right. Recommend this more. Recommend this though. Thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe, please tell others. My question of the day is, what is the best valued, um, gl- gl- what is the best valued Glendronach for its money? The best value for money in a Glendronach, is it the eight? I don't know. I'm going to try it in a moment. Is it the 10? I would prefer the for same money of the 12. Is it the 15? Roy might actually argue that the 15, but you can buy two of these almost for one of the 15 at the moment. Um, is it the 18? Um, hmm, that's getting more and more expensive over here, up, up above 100 euros. And Or is it the 21, the parliament? And it's way above 120 um, euros at the moment. And all those prices used to be 30 to 40 percent less um, just a year or even 18 months ago. So I'm going to say this is your best bet for the best value for money from anything you can get from Glendronach. And please don't mention any single casks. Those prices are just astronomical and yet they're so delicious. Um, 2019, my whiskey of the year was a 1992 single cask Glendronach. Mm. Okay, enough of I'm um, <laughs> so saliva so zabbering. Um, okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, please tell others bye bye.